All right, well, welcome. Just uh, to kick things off, I wanted to send out a shout out and a reminder that we've got our Protect Stage strategy meeting next week. Um, if you don't have the invite, that should be on the Protect Stage calendar. We actually pre-record those. Uh, these are done once a quarter and it's a great place to get some good information. So uh, please do watch the pre-recording. And if you have questions, um, we actually have two live Q&A sessions. One is more EMEA and America friendly, and then the other one is America and APAC friendly. So um, two sessions, depending on what time zone you're in. And Taylor, you had some questions. I did. Um... So I was giving a demo a couple of weeks ago and then the cluster image scanning randomly popped up uh, as I was going through something. I was like, oh, that's new. And then I saw that it popped up in the docs. So I guess I just wanted some more information around that, like how we should be talking about it to customers. Um, all of the info you gave in the doc was great. Um, yeah, so that was helpful for me. Um, I've heard it pitched a few times as like a, a, a current viable feature oh, wow. and I've been trying to correct it as a, like no actually this is an alpha you shouldn't use this against anything production like please don't uh, but test it out and give us your feedback yeah it definitely is an alpha that's interesting that um, the field has or some people are starting to pitch it as already viable I mean it certainly is usable the big caveat like the only thing that makes it not really production ready is that we've got some changes, including some potentially breaking changes planned uh, upcoming for it. And there also are some nuances around the permissions. So the, because it runs in a CI CD pipeline, you have to make a, um, a token for your cluster accessible to that CI job. And really the only way, well, the best way to do that is to pass it into an environment variable Unfortunately, that then makes it available to any jobs that run in that project. So, you know, for a project where you've got a lot of um, external contributors, it would be easy for them to just echo out or cat out that variable. And now they've got access to basically the keys of the kingdom, right? They've got access to the token that would grant them access and permission into their production cluster. So it can be de-scoped so that you're just providing the minimal set of permissions with that token. It doesn't have to be like a full cluster admin rights token. It can be just the bare minimum to retrieve the vulnerabilities. But even with that, obviously, you know, making a token or credentials available for your production cluster available as a CI CD variable that can be, you know, exposed in that way is not the best security practice necessarily unless you're you know a closed company or a really small project or maybe you set this up in its own project and you limit access to that project just to the individuals that have permission to it anyway so if you set it up right there are ways to work around that but longer term we want to you know see what we can do to make that a little bit easier and cleaner and resolve those downsides and so there probably will be breaking changes that come about as part of that which is why it's still an alpha we're not going to wait for the 15.0 release to roll out those breaking changes. So if someone goes and tries it today, it could break tomorrow is, you know, the other caveat that goes along with that. That's great to know, thank you. Um, I think my next question was about a demo project, which you gave, thank you. I will be showing that tomorrow uh, with the very detailed, like, please don't rely on this yet, but it's really cool and you should try it. Uh, pitch. Um, and then the last question was, can multiple clusters be scanned from one project? And it looks like maybe unofficially. Yeah, I, I would say it's a big maybe. Um, I haven't tried it out, but I would think that you should be able to just configure multiple jobs, one for each cluster. Like I said, each job needs its own, um, would need its own credentials to each you know, of the individual clusters. So that would be the trickiest part is just making sure that each of those have, are using the right set of credentials. Okay, cool, thank you. Um, but yeah, if you, if a customer were to set this up, like in its, their own dedicated project and they lock down access to that project, just, you know, to a really small set of individuals, then obviously that mitigates the credential sharing or permission problem. And if they're okay with it potentially breaking, you know, or making changes down the road, they certainly could start using it right now.
but we're working on it. You know, Git, GitLab, we're very iterative. So we've got this out. We're going to be improving it over the next few milestones. You'll see some UI changes. Uh, things are going to kind of shift around. And then eventually in the long run, we want people to start setting these up as a security policy, which is also another feature that's behind a feature flag at the moment. But um, instead of running it through the pipeline, it'll actually be a policy. You'll schedule this scan to run against your production cluster on a given interval. Um, so kind of a different way of doing things, a lot of changes coming there, but I think it'll be a lot better and more secure in the long run. Thank you. Um, so with that, I just wanted to run over three other areas that we're going to be releasing in the near future, or we already have released in some form. Some of this we've already talked about, uh, like we've already talked about scanning containers and production. Um, that, Right now, that's just an extra filter in the dropdown for the vulnerability report. Based off of our testing, it was a lot. Um, users preferred for that to be a little bit more separated out. So that's going to be moving into another tab, a separate tab in the vulnerability report. And you can see some of those mocks there in that linked, um, linked epic. But we're going to have a tab for your development vulnerabilities, which would be basically, at the moment, it'll be everything except for cluster image scanning. And then we'll have operational vulnerabilities, which would be your cluster image scanning vulnerabilities. And down the road, we would actually like to add a lot of additional types of scans for production environments. So that cluster image scanning is really just the first scan type to go out there. Uh, you actually could run a DASC scan against a production environment, a fuzz testing scan, um, you know, infrastructure as code, like configuration type scans, hardening scans. There's a really big long list of types of scans that we could be running in those production environments. So that's really just our first step into that space. Um, and then I mentioned security policies. I think it might be worth just doing a really brief demo if you haven't already seen where we're headed here. Um, and if this is not useful, go ahead and stop me. But we've got this up in staging at the moment and it's not perfect yet but I'm gonna show you what we have. So again, it's behind a feature flag. I'm in a project that has the feature flag turned on and it's very much under active development. So I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna see when I get in here, but we're gonna be introducing this new policies page. And when you come in here, um, all of these policies will be stored in a linked security policy project. So I'm not the owner of this project, so I can't change which one that is, but the project owner can choose what project is linked as that security policy project. So in this project, the policies and profile project, there are a set of YAML files that get stored there that define the security policies that then get applied to the development project. Um, having them separated in two different projects lets us do a lot of things. It lets you have one set of policies that get applied to multiple development projects. So it allows for a one-to-many relationship. Um, it allows for separation of duties because you can have a different set of maintainers and developers on that security policy project than you do on your development project. It gives you full audit logging and it lets you have two-step, like a two-step approval process through our regular merge request approval workflow. So you can really limit who is able to change these policies um, and track all of the changes that happen there. And then if I come in and I click new policy, we've got a couple types in here. Um, this would be a scan execution policy. And at the moment, we only support DAST. When we turn the feature flag on in 14.3, we're going to support DAST as well as secret detection. But this is a way to require that a DAS scan gets run every single time the pipeline runs, independently of what the developers put in their GitLab CI.yaml files. Um, so again, it's a way to provide that separation of duties. What this ends up actually doing is it creates a job with a fairly long custom name, and it, it forcibly injects that job into the CI pipeline. Um, it's really unlikely that another job already exists with that same name, but if there did for some reason, it would actually overwrite that job. Um, so it goes in, it overwrites any variables that it needs to to make sure that this job 
will always 100% guaranteed, you know, uh, be kicked off the way that it was specified here with, you know, the scan that you specify, the site profile, and the scanner profile of your choosing. So these all become uneditable by the developers so that this moves it fully in the control of the security team to determine, you know, which scans are required to run as part of the pipeline and what settings they run with. Um, it's the same type of policy that supports scheduling scans, and it's the same uh, type of setup that we'll be looking to move those production cluster image scans into where you'll schedule this as part of a policy. Right now we only have the YAML mode, but um, we are planning to have a side-by-side -side UI editor where you can just use regular English alongside that YAML. So you can say if a pipeline is run for a given branch, then you know this is the example that I showed before. I want to require DAS to run and it auto-generates that YAML. Or for the cluster image scanning, you would actually come and pick a cluster that you want to scan and the schedule that you want it to run on. So you know which namespace is inside of there and how frequently you want that to get kicked off. So it would look a little bit more like this um, once it's done. And this pol so this policy editor is really at the core of a lot of things we're working on right now. The last thing that I wanted to touch on is some changes that we're making to the vulnerability check process. So we're starting out again in a very iterative way, just improving what's already there um, by adding some more options. In fact, you might notice this because this is actually in production already. Some of this is. So you can now pick which security scanners the vulnerability a check applies for and how many vulnerabilities are allowed. So suppose, you know, minimum of three. I have so not noticed that, but that's super useful. Yep. Every so we are is. first just increasing the flexibility of this. Um, it, again, that's really just phase one um, out of everything. The longer term, again, is to move that into the security policy area. So let me pull up some mocks because a mock is going to be a lot better than any, anything I can just describe. <laughs> OK, so we're still ideating on some of the specifics of this flow, but just to give you an idea, um, we would keep vulnerability check for backwards compatibility until 15.0, because that would be a breaking change to remove it. So we would just deprecate it. But then we would let you have basically security policy vulnerability check rules. Um, still working on terminology there, but you would not be able to edit those in that settings UI Instead, it would direct you to go view the scan result policy. And if you click on that, it would actually take you over here. I know this is a little bit small, but it would take you to a different policy type would be a scan result policy. And you can come and say, you know, for which scans, um, you know, which branches, the number of vulnerabilities, the severity of it, whether it's newly detected or not. And then, you know, who do you want to require approval from. So it moves it from where it's at now into more of a flexible if this then that format. And it also stores all of it again as code. So thinking more of security as code, it stores it all as a YAML file in that security policy project. Um, so again, it, it's going to have all the same benefits. It's going to provide separation of duties. So your security team will be able to edit these instead of you know, the individuals who are editing the rest of the MR approvals. And again, it just provides a lot more flexibility than what exists today. So you can chain these rules as well. Like if you want multiple if conditions, you can chain those all together um, is where we're headed anyway, in the long run. Are there any questions on that? I know I just blew through a lot of different features that we're planning to um, that we're working on in one way or another. No questions for me. Looks cool though. I'm excited. None for me either. But um, I would say that's 
Wow, do I sound that, that terrible? terrible? Uh, it is a little bit off, but you're still very understandable. So you're okay. Okay. I've, I've got the echo, so pardon me if I sound a little bit out of it. Um, I did too. But I would say- Is that better? Uh, okay, all right. Um, sorry, I'm gonna get a fresh audio afterwards. But I just wanna say that security policy management is one of the uh, biggest things that I think bars adoption. Because uh, if you thought it was tough to get ops folks to write code or even YAML, then yeah, getting security folks to write it is even <laughs> tougher. And the fact that we allow it to be versioned as policy as code, security as code, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera um, is really nice. Um, and by the way, just so you're aware, Sam um, and Taylor, since I'm kind of using time for both of you, um, I joined today because I'm so behind in my understanding of where Protect is and where it's headed that I'm largely going to be just observing. Um, the last time I looked into it, we had just done the web application firewall and the container uh, network host security. So it's great to get these updates. Are you saying you don't memorize every part of the product uh, for every release? <laughs> you know, nine Would and you? a half stages out of 10, I'm good. The final half is just tough. There's so much. Yeah, that's under <laughs> totally understandable. It's a really big product. Yeah, we've since deprecated and actually removed WAF entirely um, in the 14.0 release. And we still want to do more with container host and network security. The challenge that we're seeing there is most of that is done by like an infrasec team, which is not a persona that uses GitLab today. So there's a lot of value there. There's a lot of money there for GitLab, um, but on the sales side and adoption side, it's a little bit more tricky than some other features to get used. So that's where we put those more or less on pause for a little while and pivoted to working on that container scanning in production because we really see that feature as a segue or a bridge to you know, where there's a lot of shared overlap between the AppSec teams that are using GitLab today and the infrasec teams that are not, both of them have a shared interest in that container scanning and production feature or cluster image scanning. And so we're hoping to leverage that feature to basically get us an audience with the infrasec teams, get them started using GitLab at least a little bit or interested in it and you know, just bridge ourselves over rather than you know, going at that space head on. So as we start to see that payoff and a little bit more interest come there, we're hoping to go back and reinvest in container host and network security, um, but you know, again, we've got to we, we've got to find a path from where we're at today to get to where we want to go, rather than just trying to jump to the end the end state. That makes a lot of sense. Um, in fact, uh, I have a personal theory about this, which I'll just espouse really quickly. Is if you think about some of the other security vendors out there. Um, there were very few that did anything in, in the runtime up until you know a few years back. Right? I'd say two of the names that popped to mind immediately would be like uh, ArcSan, which has since been acquired, but they're very narrowly focused. They're Android only. Um, Contrast had a general purpose RASP solution where I heard from multiple security uh, researchers um, has the quickest return on investment out of all the security solutions out there. Well, the adoption rate didn't reflect that at all. And I personally have a theory that some of the stuff that goes on in runtime, it has to do with ownership, as you pointed out, right? I feel like there's this kind of weird broken bridge between infrastructure as code and like <laughs> runtime security. Like that's all your infrastructure. That's kind of important. Um, but you know, regardless of what the reason is, it's just there's been a couple of decent products out there that just don't get very much traction when it's in the runtime. And I think it's just you're we're ahead of the market a little bit. Contrast was a little bit ahead of the market, and it's a waiting game, right? I think picking a meeting ground of where people naturally intersect today is a smart move. Um, because I was also looking at things like IAS and RASP. I worked with a couple of those solutions, which were embarrassingly immature in the past. And um, I'm like, well, hey, whatever we've got is going to be at least par with those solutions um, if we were to make it. But now I'm thinking like, you know, maybe par isn't 
the right thing. We don't know what par is because the market's not quite ready for it. Let's, and I like the notion of finding a common meeting ground today. I do get asked, like, how do you secure, you know, a container once it's in production, right? So that is something that gets asked today, not as frequently as I'd like, but I think there's also a chicken and egg consideration there, right? When we um, beat the security drums, if you will, they tend to be around like pipeline centric things. Right, um, automation centric things that happen in the pipeline. Um, I think it would make a lot of sense for the infosec teams to just get something that's natural to their universe as a starting point. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for sharing those thoughts. Um, so, yeah, we are almost out of time, just a few minutes left. But my last item is just an open question to the two of you. You know, what hot issues, focus areas are you seeing in the field? You know, what feedback, just to phrase it a little bit differently, you know, what feedback do you have for me? Um, questions, feedback, anything in terms of roadmap or where we're headed? Uh, I'll go ahead and I guess, um, since I'm a, I killed a lot of time box, um, I'd say really just, more external visibility, right? Um, as simple as a blog post, I think I saw that. I apologize for not having read the whole agenda before I hopped on, but you know, just letting folks know that it's out there for the day that they're ready, right? Um, they may not be ready today, but hey, we're doing good things that are maybe a little bit ahead of the market, but you're going to get there and this stuff's going to become super important. So just to plant that seed and let folks know that when you're all ready, we've been ready. I think that's the key number one thing for me. Um, a lot of folks don't even know, you know, that we have anything in that stage until they sit down and play with the upstream secure stage. And then they're like, oh, it's interesting that I read some stuff about, you know, the runtime. So I'd say that's step number one. Folks don't, can't buy what they don't know uh, that much about. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for that. Um, I guess I kind of already talked a little bit about what I'm seeing in the field outside of the container scanning and scanning like actively running containers. Um, like the dependency firewall has been a pretty popular thing for some of my customers to talk about. Um, that's a focus area for quite a few of mine. I'm not sure if that's super relevant here, um, but I, I like the idea of more um, like distributable content we could send out to customers, like here's this blog post about where we're gonna go and why you should care about it. Um, that'd be fun. Maybe that exists and I just haven't found it. So that's probably the case. Yeah, we, thanks again for that feedback. I mean, on the note of blog posts, we've actually had a couple go out recently. Um, some of them were published like jointly with GitLab and some of our partners when we made the switch from uh, Aqua or from Claire and Clar over to Trivi. We did a joint blog post with um, Aqua Secure, who owns Trivi, and then same thing with Encore since they added native support. We also got a really good article that was written by one of the analysts. Um, anyway, I'll try to put a list together and share it in our Slack channel. That'd be super helpful. And we could distribute it to like the SA channel for customer success as a whole. Yep, absolutely. All right. Well, thanks everyone. Thanks for your time today. And um, enjoy your enjoy your week. And if you have time, please do check out our again, just a reminder, my sales pitch at the beginning, but check out our protect stage strategy video. Sounds good. Thanks, Sam. Thanks. Have a good one. See ya.